That's deep to right. Hit a very long way. Gone! A two-run home run for Morno. Joe Girardi's going to come out and maybe ask for another look, a review. Even Justin kind of stood right there to make sure it stayed fair. In that view, it looks like it did go foul. Now we'll find out from the umpires. No home run. And Rod Gardenhire is going to come out and question the call. There's no way they can look at that last replay and conclusively prove that it was foul. Can't be done. He hit it right over the foul pole. And you can read Gardy's lips. Over the foul pole. Yeah. With an extra word or two thrown in there, but on that last replay we showed. He's I, got I can't a, say those. They get me in trouble. He's got a very valid point. Darty's been tossed. I don't blame him. He, he, you can't argue these reversals. So he's arguing now with Jim Wolf, who made the original call. And to me, there's no way they can conclu conclusively prove that the ball was out. All right. Now, right now, that ball is over the foul pole now on that replay that? it looks foul right that's the one I wonder if they looked at but you see where the ball ended but then we show this one you can see it over the foul pole boy it's hard to it's hard to yeah, you can see it drop right there the garden higher is gone and there is no home run for Morno at least not yet there are moments throughout a season that uh, can you know make or break a, a team Towering fly ball to left center field. And it's caught out there by Roger Davis. Now he dropped the ball. Young will reach. Tony stands at first. And here comes Bob Guerin. And to be honest with you, I averted my eyes, and they're going to have a discussion here. What we may have here is a, the replay of the Denard Span play. In Detroit, although that was a play when Span was on the dead run. Yeah, Ron Gardenhire is coming out too. Bob Guerin, Ron Gardenhire, and the four umpires in some combination are going to discuss this. Well, the ball just kept drifting on him. You can see where his shadow is. It's it's tough in that sun, but yep. in the exchange, and we saw it with Denard Span. You know, right here he's got it in his glove, but then he drops the ball. That is the very same play we yep. saw in Detroit early in the season. And, I, and I'll bet you any amount of money that's part of the discussion for Ron Gardenhire right now. Is that, hey, we had that same play and we right. didn't get the call. And for a while, the Tigers thought that play turned their season around because they took off from that game and played really good baseball for three weeks. Unless they, you know, why is Gardy out there explaining that if, if they said it was a no catch and Delman is safe at second. And of course it's a different umpiring crew. Right. But I don't quite understand why Gardy's out there if the runners at second. Well, I don't I think I think they have overruled the call. And I'm, Wally Bell signaled that he wanted to discuss the play. What's going to be curious here is the placement of the runners. Right, right. That's uh, yeah, I guess. If they've know. overruled and now said that it was a catch. Well, it, it's not. It's not. It could still be a force out at second, but Gardy's getting thrown out. That John Hirschbeck, the crew chief, throwing Ron Gardenhire out. And we'll find out where uh, where the runners are right now. You know the throw was to second base of Delman Young. I think they're going to call a double play. Base. I'm afraid they're gonna, they may call a double play. Well, right here it is a force out at second base. Delman well, Young. No, they. And now Tommy's being sent off. They're going to call a double play instead of first and second with nobody out because Young saw the signal from the umpire was a live ball he advanced to second and he's been doubled off if Jerry White has but Ron Gardenhire uh, has also been ejected from the game here's the play yeah another bang bang play Carroll hustling down the line fielder underhanding it and it looked like Carroll beat the throw you can see he's safe right there but 
Alan Porter calls him out. Now, Jerry White's arguing, and Carroll's saying something right there to Porter. He throws Jamie Carroll out. And then, of course, Ron Gardenhire coming out. And Gardy already had a confrontation with Porter. So when Gardy came out, he gave his two cents worth. And you can see Carroll saying, why? What did I say? And now Gardy taking over. Because their chances of winning or beating anybody right now, nine to three, probably aren't very good. Oh, a big slow curveball right there. Rapata picks up his second strikeout. Here comes an ejection. Chris Guccione's thrown someone out of the Twins' dugout, and it might be manager Ron Gardenhire. Well, you wonder if it's Gardy or maybe Jason Kubel. Someone has been ejected. And the Twins, of course, the bench is thin anyway because Morno can't play, probably isn't even here at the ballpark anymore. So you're left with home Repco and Hughes, and it's Ron Gardenhire heading down back towards the clubhouse. Nubbed up the line. Joe Nathan will chase it down, and whoa, did he get him? No, he didn't. No, he throws it safe. That is some evasive base running right there. That's why I've said since the first time I saw Nelly, if he grew up in the States, he would have been a great running back. He's got speed, agility, and power. And he showed his speed and agility right there by avoiding that tag by Joe Nathan. Ron Gardenhire might be trying to argue that he was out of the baseline. He faked the free safety right out of his uh, supporter there. I don't think he was out of the baseline when he avoided the tag. What about the tag, though? Let's see. I don't think he ever. He definitely never touched him. The three points where he possibly could have been out. Uh, he's not tagged. It's a very close play at first. And I guess it's the umpire's call. You can see Nathan pointing to where Cruz ran. Was he out of the baseline? Right? And Ron yes. Garden hires out of the game. Gary Cedarstrom stood his ground for a while, but then right at the end of that argument, the crew chief said, that's it for you. Checked his swing and a foul tip. One and two. Valencia now appealing to Joe West. Saying it, I, he didn't touch it. I thought I heard the tick, and now Ron Gardenhire is going to come out. And Joe West is warning him not to come out. I just uh, what Gardy see what Gardy wants is go ask ask the first base umpire and I knew sooner or later Joe West would be part of this ball game. Try to imagine what Joe West is thinking but I think he heard what I thought I heard and Ron Gardenhire saying appeal to the first base ump thinking perhaps it was a check swing. Well, Gardy has a right to come out and question this call. Just ask him. And then Joe West runs him out of the ballgame. Twins manager Ron Gardenhire was ejected as he came out of the dugout to argue the call at second base. Yeah, with Andy Fletcher right there. Gardy thought he had his foot, and Andy Fletcher ended up giving him the heave ho. And Gardy thrown out for the third time this year and 55th time in his career. Runner goes on 2 2, lifted in the air. Long run, Span still going, and he'll get there and drop the ball. He dropped the baseball. Jackson coming to third. They're going to stop him there, and Damon, who never stopped running, is at second base. Span, it looked like, was going to make a great catch. And I think Gardenhire is going to argue that he had it long enough. 
garden hire with his argument he may at least get the umpires to huddle span ran a country mile to get to this ball i mean a country mile i think that's a catch don't i you? do too yeah that's a catch i do too he dropped it on the exchange and that's what garden hires arguing that's a catch boy did he go a long way to get to this ball Meanwhile, Damon hit that thing a ton, much farther than I thought. So this will be a huge call either way. If you're Jackson, you did all that you could do. Doesn't look like Gardenhire is going to win this argument. Back to third base. Well, Gardenhire is hot right now, and he's having it out with Gary Darling, and there he goes. Ron Gardenhire has been ejected from this game. And I think he's got a beef on this call because it certainly looked like Span had that ball long enough. He got them to huddle, and here's another look. The catch, one, two, three steps. That almost hit him. It did hit him. Or did it? No, Kadir trying to buy it, but sell it rather Paul Nard is not buying it and here comes Ron Gardenhire. That ball didn't come close. Not even close. Well Leland was ejected last night and Gardenhire gets the Evo today. He's been thrown out of the game. The team's health in September. Grounder to short. How many can they get here? One. And Casilla doesn't get an out at second. And now oh. Gardenhire is going to vehemently argue this one with Joe West making the call at second base that no outs are recorded. Uh, the exchange right there. Casilla had lo he lost the ball through the exchange. And this is the second time that Ron Gardenhire and Joe West have had a conversation. Watch his slow right there. The ball's in his glove. And then in the exchange. That's a terrible call. Yeah. That's not right right there because Joe West is watching. You can see he drops the ball, taking the ball out of the glove. plays at second base and around the second base bag all night long and without excusing to see it for not turning the double play clearly one out was should have been recorded now you see Joe West running throwing out Ron Gardenhire and you know Joe West missed the call and Ron Gardenhire gets thrown out but it'll be an error on Casilla. And now more discussion, discourse from the Twins dugout, or they're waiting perhaps for Ron Gardenhire to actually leave the dugout. We can't tell. That's what the delay was. Breaking pitch, and Gonzalez ended up about five feet off the pitching mound after he delivered that pitch. His third straight strikeout in relief went back to that breaking ball. And, I, don't, I think Danny Valencia just got tossed in the game. And here comes Ron Gardenhire to visit with his good friend Hunter Wendelstead. Well, Danny, I think, was upset at the 3 1 pitch. He's walking away. You can read Ron Gardenhire's lips. And the manager's going to follow him real soon. There you go. And again, they've had history that both men have said they've put behind them. But Wendelstead. Well, he's saying that Danny said something and he's walking away and Hunter Wendelstead throwing him out. Jerry right. Lane right there, the crew chief. He too has had trouble with Ron Gardner. It's not that right there. Watch Danny saying something to him right there. That, that pitch is low. Maybe the 3-1 pitch is not that last one. 
Well, I think with that last gesture with the right arm, that's what got Valencia tossed, and now the manager is going to back up his players and flips his cap and discuss. It's been so many things building up here. And of all people, there's another fan throwing his cap on the field, and we don't want this to get out of hand. Span squares, it's called a strike, and Swisher nowhere near the bag. With Span squaring, Swisher was coming in, and you can see the, the catcher, Stewart, saying, hey, that's my bad. He threw almost behind the first baseman. Well, showing bunt right there, at least, uh, you know, he, he got it up in the air, Stewart did. And allowed Swisher to get back and catch the ball. And as you said, Swisher new to the team and probably hasn't uh, been out there Stewart, at all yeah. with uh, to sh with uh, a Swisher at first base. Mm -hmm. Span, I think, is uh, questioning why that pitch was called a strike. And Span's been tossed. This is related to the balk, and I think it has all uh, everything to do with Denard Span questioning the strike one call. Well, if you've been around an art span, you know there was no cussing involved. Very short fuse for home plate umpire Greg Gibson. And now the manager is going to pick up the argument. And that's no more than a than a toss of the coin here as to whether Gardy is going to survive this discussion at all. Because the manager, as we said, was agitated about the ball call in the bottom of the second. There he goes. There he goes. We could read Gardy's lips after the ball call. Said, "I'm going to remember that one. I'm going to remember that one." And it didn't take a long memory to get you to the top of the next inning. Let's take a look at the pitch right here that Denard span question he squared around and the ball inside and span that's what he was asking I thought that ball was inside though so they're having a conversation about it and then Gibson I guess had enough right there span said something else and then gives him threw him out well the twins Will play the rest of this game without their manager and without uh, and their center fielder their center fielder Cleet Thomas will uh, hit for span and in all likelihood take over in center that one is fair over the bag and Wells has driven in one run to third is Peralta he's being waved around a fan has reached over and touched the ball and for the time being it's going to cost the Tigers a run. So a double for Wells and the sixth inning starts with four straight hits. Yeah, Peralta will have to go back to third base. Cabrera does score the second run of the inning. And an RBI double for Wells, riding in his 15th of the year. Jim Leland coming up to argue the point that on fan interference, it's to the umpire's discretion as to how many bases they're going to award. And so now Ron Gardenhire coming out here. And in fact, they're giving the uh, the Peralta the run home. Ron Gardenhire arguing it. Now I just looked up, and Wells is at third base. Yeah. Now, I thought the rule was it's up to the umpire to award bases for the runners, but apparently the ruling here is that they can also award a third base to the batter. Which is what they've done here. Well, the ball right down that line. Timmy, Tim Cheetah saying that it went, uh, you know, it's fair ball. Uh, Cabrera scores. Peralta scores. And I'm surprised right here that they don't. They have Wells go to third. He should go back to second. There's no chance of him getting third base no. if that ball is played off the sidewall by Delman Young. Right. So Peralta does score. It's not a ground rule double. It's a fan interference. It's a completely different deal. And I think the umpires were right in awarding Peralta a run here. 
Well, Delman's going to play that little ricochet, but instead the fan puts his hand, or she does. And Ron Gardner has just been ejected. He kept chirping at home plate umpire Tim Timmons. And from the dugout, Tim Timmons heard it and kicked the Twins manager out. And what he's upset about, I'm I, sure. I, he said, I didn't say a word. Well, I think. What he's upset about is the placement of Wells at third base. Well, he's having words with uh, Tim Cheetah. So I understand why Peralta was going to was given home plate. I looked up and I saw the umpire motioning to third and I thought they were sending Peralta back there which would not have been the right call. The Tigers were going to send him. Well, here's a play. Casper Wells hitting this ball right down the line. Now the ball, you know, hitting the grass, it's slowing down a little bit, but Yelman Young's going to play the little carom, but the young lady right there, she stops the ball. And that's when the ball should have been. I mean, once it, wherever he was, and he was just, Casper Wells was right at second base. He should be at second base rather than third. And Escobar taps it down beautifully. Ortiz fires to third. They got him! I didn't think there was a chance that they would get him. An awkward throw for the left handed pitcher and a look from up here. Like Garcia was clearly safe. I think. Uh, Alfonso Marquez saying that Beltre. Caught that ball for the force out. I thought that Garcia was clearly ahead of the. Uh, Ortiz definitely was thinking first but I think AJ went out there screaming third base fans want an ejection and the umpire more animated than the manager right now There it goes. And now the manager is going to get his money's worth. He was out. Well, he was out. It was not I, a good slide by Arcia. Yeah. Well, the button laid down, and Ortiz, I think he heard. Yep. His feet were up in the air. Yeah. They want to slide directly into the bag. That was a good call by third base umpire Alfonso Marquez. So the sacrifice does not work as the Rangers take a bit of a gamble and it would not have worked I don't think if Arcia had slid feet first into the bag. That's a fair ball down the line. Peralta rounding second on his way to third and a fan touched the ball. They'll send the runner back to third base. And they're going to meet about it. it's not an automatic but they called fan interference and now the umpires all four of them will try to place Peralta at the proper base and they may hold him at third. Here's Leland out. They're giving him a run and here comes Ron Garden high. Oh that ball actually looked like it went into the stands and then ricocheted back. They're going to allow three bases on the double with fan interference. And Gardy saying that's where he was. He's about halfway when that ball caromed over toward Del Mignon. Well, Peralta didn't go with the pitch. He's not known as having great wheels. Uh, you know what the railing is so low down that left field line fans were there. I mean they're touching that ball Even though you know it should be fan interference 
take a look kind of slashed the other way a la Denard span yesterday right down that third baseline and you can see the fans reaching over and then the ball bouncing went into the stands and then bounced out it did go into the stands yep. the fan touched it and deflected it into the stands so yep. it left the field of play that's what I thought that's what I saw from it was, my angle it was touched on the field of play then deflected where it was touched in the right. seating There's area that one little area that shoots out where the ball boy is sitting well and, and this is this is going to spark the argument about whether Replay should be used right there. It right, hit the young it. man in the head. Right, it hit him in the chest area, it looks like. And Gardenhire is going to come down and he's going to continue after having already been tossed. Well, this is what I saw from our angle. I saw that ball going in and then it deflected off of somebody and came back into fair play. And that was the ejection while we were showing the replay. Oh. Maurer hit by the pitch. On 3 and 0. Oh. And that ball hit him in the back. That pitch wasn't even close. And Ron Gardner is not happy about that at all. Because a guy like Oswald, who has very good command and always has, misses his target by about three and a half feet. That'll fire up the dugout. Oh, It'll fire everybody up because this is absolutely on purpose. You can say what you want, but you don't miss a target by three feet when you're a veteran pitcher like that on a 3 0 count. And everybody in the ballpark knows or in the dugouts and sitting up here, I know that that's definitely, you know, Joe's hit the double early in the ball game and has had success here in this ballpark. And <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> there you yeah. go. And they're throwing diamond out of the game. No this, warnings. Gardy isn't going to last long in this ball game. I promise you that. Because Wally Bell had his chance to do something and at least warn the guys, and he did not. And I told you that. Wally Bell's the right guy to have. He didn't warn him, but because that ball went behind Hamilton's head, he throws Scott Diamond out of the ball game. Three and zero. Oh, you can read his lips. And this is the part of baseball that is disappointing that the rules have been changed and things have been changed. And Wally Bell knows it and he's taken an earful from Gardy. And Wally Bell's been around this league a long time and he's just doing what the league has told him. But he knows that he's wrong. Wally Bell, I promise you, knows at home plate that what's going on right now is old school baseball in the way it should be played. And he's not able to do what he wants to do. I promise you that. Hamilton coming up to Maurer and had a good time in Kansas City at the All-Star well, game, didn't we? Wally Bell mask off, Joe keeps the mask on. Everybody knows what's going to happen. And you look at the look on Wally Bell's face going, well, I know what I got to do and this stinks. This is not going to be a fun next no. five minutes. No. Nope. He knew it as soon as that ball was thrown, he had to throw him out of the game. And unfortunately for the Twins, that... Scott Diamond did not make contact with Hamilton because that's what they want to have. Where he placed the ball, that's where the bun hit was made. He's got great speed. Dribbled up the line, and now Hughes has to hurry to get the ball to Thomas or to the first baseman over Bay. And he may have hit Thomas in the back. They're calling Thomas out for running out of the baseline. Here comes Ron Gardenhire to argue. Dick Carapazza making the call. I can't imagine Ron Gardenhire staying in the game. This play, the ball and the runner get to first base at the same time. So how can you be out of the base path if the ball and the runner get there at the same time? There is no way that he is infringing on Hughes being able to throw that ball to first base. This is just a bad call to me by the home plate umpire. And Ron Gardenhire gesturing with both his left arm, his right arm, his left foot and Gardy's been tossed. It's always a tricky call because the runner has to be in fair territory if he's ever going to have any hope of touching the base. That's where the base is. So let's take a look and see where Thomas was going down the line. 
Oh my. So that's just a terrible call. Thomas gets there at first base like we said at the same time of the ball. He's not interfering with the throw by Hughes by no means and he's running on the chalk line. Now one foot is touching the grass. He's on the inside of the baseline and reaches for the foot or for the bag with his left foot. And that's just a terrible call. And that's just what the call is and then where they place the runners. Oh my. Wow. And Ron Gardenhire will get tossed now because of this. He yeah. cannot argue this. And he's gone. And of course he's arguing with the wrong man. That's the issue here. If the ball was made in New York, not by Ted Barrett. I don't understand that. It was apparent to me that the ball was grounded. One nothing twins. They're battling hard, and, and uh, this guy does it very well, Justin Bueno. That's a that's a nice play. A three six one double play. I think Willingham and and Garden Hire are saying that Peralta was not on the base when he caught the ball. No, he's standing right on it. Let's see. And Gard has just been tossed. Ron Gardenhire has been ejected to, from the game by Joe West, and I don't know what they were arguing. I did not see Willingham get ejected. I wonder whether Willingham might also be gone. I don't know what the argument would be around second base. The only other thing that I can think is whether I, I didn't see. Joe West call uh, uh, Morneau out Wait. automatically for Joe Maurer is at second base. Now are they calling an automatic double play for Willingham sliding? That's out what of I the that's, that's what I was going to say. Okay. I, I I didn't see Joe West call the the uh, the double play immediately uh, because Willingham he would have said went out of the baseline to get Peralta. I I think that's that's the only thing I can think of is that. That West ruled that Willingham had gone out of his way to, to knock Peralta down, and that's why Josh would have been arguing. Well, he's going to be saying, I danced out of the way. I don't know if he was able to keep his eye on the ball. Uh, I don't think he was, Bert. I don't think he really had a good look at it. I, the home plate umpire would have been looking down the line just like I am, and, and he would be the only right. guy that could see it. We were talking to the other umpires, maybe what they do to Dick's point about where they where they put if they overrule him. If they try to get it right, which they should do, and the umpire, home plate umpire, saw for sure that it was a fair ball, then they, they, they'll they'll get it right. But now they get, they have to talk about where the, where the runner's going to go. Dale Scott is a crew chief, and let's see what he's going to do. He's gonna here comes Ron Gardenhire, and this isn't going to he's not going to last very long. No, this is this a pretty good chance. This is the last we'll see of Gardner. I saw Dale Scott. Now he's a crew chief going no 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 to Bill Miller, and then they had to explain. Something to Bill Miller. Artie's not a happy camper here. I think what happened, to be honest with you, and maybe we'll have a replay that will show it. I think there was visual proof that the ball hit the chalk line, and Bill Miller came in and said, I didn't see it. I called it foul, but it's right at my feet. The ball kicked up chalk. Yeah, but you've got to realize that there's infielders, outfielders coming in and, and kicking the sometimes kicking a chalk line. So Guardians, you can read his lips. You called it foul. You can't reverse the call. Dale Scott the crew chief and Bill Miller are being very patient here. I think they realize that they have put Ron Gardenhire in a very ticklish situation here. This is not something that anyone has ever seen happen before. They're advancing runners all over the place on a ball that was ruled foul. Well, it looks like they're giving uh, Lowry a double.
next year, of course, that'll be a different issue, but this is this year. And Ron Gardenhire given a lot of latitude. And yeah. the latitude just ran out. Yeah, fifth time that uh, Ron Gardenhire has been ejected uh, this year. And you knew that was coming. Three ground ball double plays. Oh, that hit the runner. And the runner is out of smash that got Jackson. And Martinez will have to retreat to third base. So not a double play grounder, which might have been the result. Here comes Ron Gardenhire to. And so is Paul Molitor saying, hey, can we get a double play ruling here? The ball was hit right at Escobar. And it, yeah, that was a that was a type of ground ball that routinely would be a double play. I don't know how I really don't know the rule on this. I'm so. going to look it up because the appeal from the Twins dugout is that is within the umpire's prerogative to rule here comes a Joe, double play. Joe West is slowly working his way over to this argument. He is the crew chief, so Gardy doesn't even want to talk to him. He knows the <laughs> the history between the two of them. And Ron Gardenhire saying, well, the ball was hit right at the shortstop. It was a Taylor made double play grounder, and it hit the runner. Well, rarely do you get to see a good argument anymore. Gardy's getting heated up yep. here. There it is. Joe West doing what he's done so many times. It's almost like he antagonized Gardy well, into this one. I'm just curious why. At third base, he even entered the discussion to be the primary umpire in the discussion. He is the crew chief. But we will, as soon as we can, try to get you the rule. We'll get to see the ground ball here. You can see that at second base, Austin Jackson was breaking towards third, and the ball clearly hit him easily. But it was a quick ball that you can see right here that the runner was barely getting out of the box and they would have had a play at second which would have led you to believe that there is a chance for a double play there. Dentist. From the stretch and the 2 2 hit him. And Maxwell is livid. He slams the bat down. And now kind of staring at the Duno and Ryan Dobit is walking Maxwell up the first base line but Maxwell staring at the Duno and Maxwell got hit. In the upper left arm near the shoulder, and he was none too happy about it. Slammed that bat down, and Doman had to pop up and kind of walk Maxwell to first. And now Alan Porter has issued warnings early on today, and Cardi can't believe it. Well, Danny, warnings were issued yesterday by Hunter Wendelstead after Andrew Albers came inside, did not hit Salvador Perez. This was after Perez hit his first home run, and now Porter is thrown out guard. So Gardy's been ejected by Alan Porter. The warnings were issued yesterday. And warnings issued right away. And Caduno, as we have told the story many times, he has that fastball that can go anywhere. And he hit Maxwell. And Porter just came out, issued warnings. So Gardy came out to discuss why. And Porter gave him the gate. What do you make of just what happened? Well, I think you touched on it. That Duno is somewhat wild. We've always talked about the uncomfortable at bats the opposing team has against him, and that was just a ball that ran up and in. I think Porter reacted based on the way Mc Maxwell reacted, and that is he slammed his bat, stared out at the mound. I like what Doma did. He kind of came up and got in the grill of Maxwell and told him, "Hey, get your butt to first base, all right." Guy's not throwing at you, and you've got to know a little bit, have a better feel for the game as to who the players are, how they play, how they pitch. And I think Alan Porter is one of those guys that maybe still has a learning curve because if he knows anything about Duduno, he knows he is a little bit wild. Unfair. It's the ninth batter Duduno has hit this year. 
Two strikes to Dunn. Just outside, one and two. Come on, DJ, let's go. One ball, ball right down the middle. You can almost hear the dugout talking to home plate umpire DJ Rayburn. Let's go. Right, Somebody got Gardy tossed. Out. I think he yeah, was Guardy. Yep. I know Tom Bernanski was engaged in the conversation, and now Rayburn walking away from the manager. It's only the second time Guardy's getting thrown out this year. And he let DJ Rayburn know how he thought about a strike zone. And even that, he got kicked out. He went out, said his piece, screamed a little bit as much as his ill voice would let him. Morning track and right center his first time up. Yeah, you got to watch uh, Phelps, as Ooh. you mentioned, three pickoffs already this year. Nine in his career. Sam Fold uh, and I think Scotty Alger too saying, hey, that's a bar. And I think our dugout microphone can uh, pick up the sentiment from the dugout as well. One balk has been called on Phelps. Folds get the backs easier there. And Ron Gardenhire still giving it to Marty Foster. Both moves. Go ahead. Knock it off. And Ron Gardenhire almost taunting Marty Foster to throw him out, and he's gone. All I heard was go ahead. And Marty Foster said, all right then. You know, sometimes umpires can't take any criticism and this is a game sometimes of criticism well I wonder if any of this though with the pointing at the at home plate has to deal with the call out of Willingham in the second inning regardy well, kind of saying you know he moved his left foot before he threw to first base and that's a balk let's take a look a couple throws ago to first base you saw yeah. the left foot kind of move and you you can't you know you have to pick up that foot to throw to first. And Joe West the crew chief comes over and walks Gardy back to the bench. Third ejection of the year for Ron Gardenhier. Which is way below his pace. See, right there right there the bend of the knee and the foot that that definitely is a balk. A change up right here. Foul tip. Bauer claiming it hit the dirt. And the at bat still alive, I believe. Yep. Bauer claiming that the foul tip hit the dirt. And now Chris Siegel is going to get some rebuttal from Ned Yost. Well, it looked like the change up. And it was perfect down and yep. away. And you could see the little. Uh, Bounce in front of the glove of Perez. Well, now Joel Maurer discussing it with Siegel as if Maurer's been called out. There's no question it was a foul tip. The ball went straight down on the dirt, and then on replay, you could see the ball bounce up into Perez's glove. That is a tough call, so hopefully he can ask for some help because. Of where that umpire sits behind the catcher. We could see the dirt kick up. I thought that first shot that we had really showed the ball kind of hitting the dirt before it uh, bounced into the glove. Let's take a look at the first shot right here. Let's see. Straightaway center shot. It sure looked like it. Uh, Hit the dirt. Well, two things had to happen. It had to be foul tipped, and you could see the ball was redirected. And then it had to have hit the ground, and you could see in replay that it did. But given this discussion, it sure sounds like Joe Maurer's been called out. Otherwise, Ned Yost would be picking up the argument. Yeah, Joe's out. It's a strikeout. Now, you can't 
as a manager argue balls and strikes. What Gar Gardy is arguing was that Field and Colbreth might have seen a different. I'm telling you, that, that's a tough call for a home plate umpire because a glove, you know, you almost have to watch him. The ball hit the dirt. And that's of course, where it, you'd like to have help from, uh, you know, the crew chief, right. Phil, Phil and Colbert, or the first base umpire, Dan Ayasanya. Well, now the Twins need to pick me up, and Chris Siegel is hearing more from the Twins dugout here. And Garnet's toss, he wanted the ball checked. I think our microphone could pick that up. Check the ball to see if there's a scuff mark. And I think what Gardy did there was to do what he could to keep Joe Maurer in the game, who I don't believe has ever been ejected. And what he's saying is just check well, the ball. I'm wondering if uh, Kenny Vargas asked the umpire to check the ball. Maybe they uh, they said no we're not going to. Which is a hitter's prerogative right. right. If you... All right the ball goes down the spin changes it hits the dirt and bounces up into Perez's mitt. Well, all Gardy got thrown out for is just check the ball. And uh, the final words were that's wrong. And I believe the manager is right. A hitter can have an umpire ask the umpire to check the baseball and I think that was the basis of the twins appeal. I don't think it would have changed anything. With Maurer already back in the dugout. So the manager is gone. And the